Want to learn how to create this awesome animated text background? Well, let's get right into it. Alrighty, so once we get into our Premiere Pro project, we're just going to go down here to this little paper icon and click on color mallet. Make sure it's 1920 by 1080 and click OK. And then for me, I'm just going to change the color to a light blue. You can do the same or you can choose a new color. This is just going to be our background color, so you can choose whatever. We're going to drag this color mallet right onto our timeline. We're going to extend it out about 10 seconds. Then the next thing we're going to do is go down to this text icon and we're going to click it and we're going to create a new text. For my word, I'm just going to do wavy and I also am going to change the font of it. So I'm just going to double click and go over to the effects control panel and just go to the source text. And for now, I think I'm just going to use the Coco Sharp trial. You guys can choose whatever, but I just personally like this text. Now, after you create your word, we're actually going to duplicate it a couple of times. So just do control C over top of it and then do control V a couple of times. Make sure there is a space in between the word just makes it look a little better and then you want to have it duplicated around six or seven times and then all we want to do is extend it a little bit so it takes up the entire screen now we are going to want to make sure it's nice and centered so just hold control and grab that text layer and you should see it snaps right into the middle with those red dotted lines and then we are just going to drag this wavy text file up to that 10 second point and then make sure that text layer is selected and we're going to go up to the effects panel and type in vr rotate sphere we're just going to double click on that bad boy and we're going to change some of the aspects on that in the effects control panel for the x-axis we're just going to make it minus 20 we're going to create a keyframe and then we're going to go to the very end of the timeline and we're going to drag this y-axis to times two this is the speed of the animation where the text is going so you guys can adjust it likewise but i think this is a good speed for now now we are going to duplicate this layer a bunch of times so we're just going to get this step out of the way so just right click on this dead space here we're going to go to add tracks and for the video tracks i'm just going to add an additional 15 and we're going to press ok once we create those duplicate layers, we're going to go up to the effects panel and we're going to type in transform. And then we're just going to drag that right onto our text layer. Now we're going to actually duplicate this layer. So all we're going to have to do is hold alt, drag up on our mouse key and release on our mouse key. And you can see we created a duplicate layer. And the spacing between these text layers, I'm going to do increments of 140. So from the effects panel in the transform, we're going to change the position from 540 to 680. And then we're just going to keep duplicating these text layers and keep going up 140. 40 increments until we reach the bottom of the page and then we're also going to do the same for the upper half but all we're going to have to do is duplicate the very first text layer so make sure you just select that very first one that's right over top of the color mallet hold alt and drag it up right above all of the other duplicates and then we're just going to select that layer and instead of adding 140 we're going to take away 140. So we're just going to make this transform position to 400 and then we're just going to keep doing these same steps until we no longer see those text layers now to add a little more dynamic to this image we're going to add some chromatic aberrations so all we're going to have to do is select all of the duplicate text layers leave the original one and we're just going to drag them up one layer so we have a little extra space here we're going to go to this little page icon and create an adjustment layer we're going to drag this adjustment layer right into that little open spot and drag it out to the max and then we're going to select that adjustment layer go up to the effects panel and type in chromatic aberrations it should be under immersive video and we can just double click on it. So we're going to go down to the effects control panel for the VR chromatic aberrations and we're going to change this 960 to 1850. And then we're going to make sure that our blue tracer is at the very beginning of our animation. We're going to create a keyframe for this point of interest. And then we're going to go about three seconds over and then we're going to change this 1850 to 3850. We're actually going to drag this second keyframe a little closer. So I'd say about two seconds after the first keyframe just make it go a little quicker and then we are going to have to add some opacity so i'm just going to scroll in a bit and then right at the beginning of the animation we're going to make sure our blue tracers at the beginning of it we're going to create a keyframe for the opacity so we're just going to change this 100 to zero and it should automatically make a keyframe we're going to go about 10 frames forward and we're going to change the opacity to 100 and then we're going to go about 10 frames before this animation ends and we're going to create another keyframe by just clicking this one right here and then right when the animation ends we're going to change the opacity to zero 
So you can kind of see it adds a little dynamic to the background. We're just going to do this a couple more times, just in different areas and different times. So I'm just going to drag the last three duplicated layers up one layer. So we have a little extra space. And then I'm just going to duplicate this adjustment layer. And we're going to just duplicate right in between that little space here. And then if we hover over it, you can see that adjustment layer is actually affecting all of the layers underneath this. So to combat this issue, we're just going to select the adjustment layer and the one text layer underneath it by holding shift and then we're just going to right click and go to nest and click OK. And now you can see it's only affecting those two layers that are nested. So we just got to double click into that nest layer and you can see that effect is well present. And we are just going to change the time this adjustment layer appears. So I'm just going to drag the adjustment layer about two seconds after. So it appears at a different standpoint. And then just because it's bugging me, I'm just going to create a nested layer for the previous adjustment layer and the other wave text. I'm just going to right click and go to nest. Just so it's a little bit easier to see. And then I'd say we can do it one or two more times. Just gonna drag these three layers up so we have a little extra space. I'm gonna click into either of the nest layers and I'm just gonna actually copy the adjustment layer since we can't duplicate it. So I'm just gonna press Control C, go back to our original layer, which should be the leftmost icon right here. We're gonna drag our blue tracer to the end of the animation and just press Control V. And you can see that layer is duplicated. And then we're just gonna bring that adjustment layer right up to that empty spot. We're going to hold shift and click on the text layer underneath it, right click and we're going to nest it. We're going to double click into that nest layer and then we're just going to change the adjustment layer just a little bit farther so it occurs a little bit later. And then you guys can just play around with it. I personally just like it because it adds a little dynamic to it. It's not as boring. And then the final step is just selecting all of the layers except for the color mallet. So it's just basically all the text layers. We're going to right click and we're going to create another nest sequence. So you should see our text layers are all in here and our color mallet is on the bottom. We're going to select our text layers and we're going to go over to the effects control panel. We're going to rotate it about negative six so it adds a little more dynamic and then we're just going to zoom in with the scale. So I'd say about 123. Now if you're interested in creating a retro background animation make sure you click on the video that is on the right hand of your screen. That's everything for me guys. Peace out.